sometimes when you're testing a, an amplifier like a, a car stereo amp like this um, you may need to be able to test this without a loudspeaker um, and you need to dissipate lots of power in order to test this and the normal way of doing this would be to have a power resistor maybe bolted onto a heatsink and just use that to dissipate the the energy but then you need quite a large heatsink um, so I wanted to come up with something smaller that could be useful for this and so here's the final result it's actually pretty small just maybe slightly larger than a coke can and the way it works is uh, inside here the way it works is inside here is a, a spool of resistance wire just wind up in a coil you can see in here so I've just used uh, this is slightly thicker I used thinner wire inside there and really that's it so the two ends of the resistance wire come out here uh, and as well as that there's a center tap so I can get 8 ohms, 4 ohms or if I connect these two outer uh, links together then I'll be able to get 2 ohms resistance as well so I can test a, a variety of different amplifiers uh, with this and then a fan is needed to cool this so air is drawn in from here and comes out this direction and there's power connection for that as well so it's really trivially easy actually to to make something like this and you can build more of these uh, for testing multiple channels simultaneously or for paralleling these devices up for even more power um, it, during the testing I, I found that it can handle 200, uh, 200 watts of power continuous uh, with no issue I may be able to handle more than that but I didn't test more much more than that I tried 300 watts and I, I left it right running for only a few seconds because I, I didn't want to burn it out and it did work fine at 300 watts uh, but uh, yeah I've, I've not run that continuously but at 200 watts it's it, it seems to be totally fine all the detail is in the blog post but uh, to cut a long story short a couple of PCBs were used and this is the same same board and um, they've got slit down here so a couple of them can be joined together like this and they're quite stiff so you might need a soft mallet and hammer them together and then they were soldered down here just to keep it in that formation and just aluminium section square section was used so this will then fit inside there and it'll just slide in and then because there's lots of holes here and they're all offset slightly so that you can wind like a big spiral around here and you can make a spiral of a spiral by winding the wire in here and to do that once I'd pushed the wire in and soldered it at one end I used ferrules to do that um, so I actually soldered a ferrule here with the wire and then I used uh, just some four millimeter shaft you could use a drill, drill bit and then just wind wire here six or seven turns and then push it through here then wind another bunch of turns and then so on all the way through to the end and that means then that each turn can be a certain resistance and I, to to measure it I used a milliometer and I made it so that there were eight different uh, resistances so from one ohm all the way up to eight ohms and then they can be brought out onto binding posts using this circuit board which gets soldered here like that so it kind of looks like that in the end and each connection then gets brought out to here and then I, I actually only brought out the, the two ends and the center tap here uh, but if you wanted to you could put a whole load more binding posts and have all of the other taps out as well as I mentioned there's more information in the blog post and actually also another thing you could do is uh, there's a lot of area here so if you wanted to do some labeling and stuff on here I found an interesting way of doing that was you could do something like this uh, which is just using enamel uh, but you've got to do this before you um, put everything inside it and I this was an afterthought and I'm just kind of learning how to do this but you can buy some like enamel it costs next to nothing and cut out a shape and put it on top here sprinkle the enamel on top of that and then use a small candle inside here like a tea light which heats this up and then that makes the enamel uh, bind to the 
to the metal. I didn't do a great job here, but this was my first attempt. Here's a demo of the complete system. So I've got the load connected up to power supply, set to 40 volts, up to 5.1 amps maximum. And for measuring the temperature, I'm using this Sensirion temperature measurement device. Uh, hopefully you can see the screen there. It says 20.5 degrees C. Um, otherwise, the, the good thing about this is it can log to Bluetooth as well. So um, for example, here I can, can see the current temperature, 20.5 and you can also view a plot so for example over the past week uh, the temperature here has been like that and you can also view humidity as well so it's very useful and in the green zone is a good zone uh, blue and yellow is bad so then you know that you need to do something about the humidity or the temperature um, so yeah it's really useful for that but i'll just put on the dashboard for now so you can see it's 20.5 degrees at the moment and uh, uh, so I'm going to set it to 40 volts. The fan is running on that. It's very quiet, so maybe that's not audible. And um, so if I turn the power supply on, and if you watch the temperature rise, so it's turning on the power supply now, and it's drawing 4.9-ish, five, almost 5 amps. And yeah, so the temperature's now shooting up 27, 29. <laughs> Um, but it's fairly rock steady, so it's 4.99 amps at 40 volts, so almost exactly 200 watts of power is being dissipated, and I can feel you know, plenty of heat coming off that. So the temp temperature's risen now, uh, about five, about five or six centimeters away from the, uh, the 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 dummy load. The temperature's now up to about 47 degrees. So it can sustain this. It doesn't seem to uh, have any issues. I mean, I think it can happily dissipate 200 watts. And I, I did try about 300 watts as well. And uh, at that level, I, I felt uncomfortable leaving it on for too long. So I switched it off after a few seconds. Uh, but it, it, can, it can definitely withstand that intermittently as well.